Amidst the debate on Scottish independence, it often seems like those on the no side are just a bunch of nationalistic flag wavers with a personal vendetta towards the Scottish Government. But there's a whole lot of people out there whose opposition to independence is genuinely driven by their conscience. Maybe you're one of them. And if you are, don't worry. It's perfectly natural to have some questions. In fact, it'd be a bit weird if you didn't. On the face of it, quite sensible questions like, in this day and age, isn't it a backward step to want to become smaller? Or you might find yourself saying, I'm not a nationalist, I'm an internationalist. Of course, both of these points are based on a fundamental misunderstanding of the argument, but that shouldn't really come as a surprise, given that there's been a great deal of misinformation churned out by those who have a vested interest in retaining the status quo. Independence doesn't mean that Scotland will become smaller. Quite the contrary, it means that we'll have a bigger presence in the world, and that would give us a much better means to express our distaste over things like nuclear weapons and illegal wars, or at the very least the ability not to get involved in them. His weapons of mass destruction programme is active, detailed and growing. When the No campaign talk about our being stronger as part of the UK, by strength they really mean influence through military and economic might. The message they're trying to push is quite simply bigger equals better. But let's take a look at some small countries, all of which feature in the top 10 countries worldwide for quality of life. Switzerland, with a population of around 8 million, has the highest wealth per adult of any country in the world, as well as sitting among the 25 lowest crime rates on the planet. Sweden, with a population of around 9.5 million, ranks 12th place in terms of worldwide average wages. The World Economic Forum ranked it the second most competitive country, and it's considered one of the most equal countries in terms of income. Denmark, whose population sits at about 5.5 million, has the world's highest level of income equality, as well as one of the highest per capita incomes. It's also ranked on more than one occasion as both the happiest and least corrupt country in the world. Luxembourg, with a population of just 500,000, has the third highest average wage worldwide. Norway, with a population of about 5 million, their crime rate is among the lowest 15 countries in the world. And the UN Development Programme deemed Norway to be the world's best country. Doesn't really get much better than that. And what about those countries that have gone full whack for the bigger, stronger, supposedly better model advocated by the No Campaign? Well, Russia's pretty big. With a population of 141 million, sure it's among the top three military powers in the world, but it ranks at just 105 worldwide for quality of life. And its political history is peppered with some all-round shady characters. That's not even mentioning the current government, which has been consistently accused of widespread corruption. The United States of America has a population of around 300 million, ranks as the biggest military power in the world, and whilst they love nothing more than banging on about freedom and democracy, Americans of almost every political stripe would agree that their government is pretty ineffective and out of touch with the vast majority of its population. The USA ranks within the 50 highest crime rates in the world, seven places behind Iraq and just two below Colombia. And of course, the biggest of them all, China. With a population of 1.35 billion, also ranks in the top three military powers of the world. Sure, they're all extremely powerful in terms of economic and military strength, but all have extremely centralised governments which, by their very nature, leave millions of people completely disenfranchised. Incidentally, the UK's current position on the Worldwide Quality of Life Index is 29. That's just ahead of South Korea and three places ahead of Mexico. So, short of some sort of one-world utopia, which, lovely as it sounds, isn't going to happen any century soon, we can pretty much agree that bigger is definitely not better. In actual fact, cooperation, democracy, fairness, all those things we all want, can only be achieved when we scale back a bit. And remember, that, that doesn't just apply to Scotland. Post-independence, England will benefit in much the same way. You'll notice how those opposed to independence tend to talk almost exclusively in terms of Britain's strength, influence, power and the past. Whilst those who support independence tend to talk about internationalism, democracy, choice and the future. It's getting clearer every day why more and more people are getting behind the idea of an independent Scotland. So for all the right reasons, in 2014, let's make it happen. Let's vote yes.